update because this is kind of the last bit of mileage we're going to get out of that uh, fine piece of television. The James Shields update lands in San Diego. If we take the hot stove presents off that, James Shields update you still can use 35 times a year. That's true. Right? Every time he starts. There you go. Why not? Uh, so the, the James Shields update means that the NL West gets even stronger. And if the Dodgers and Giants, the vanguards of the division, were kind of taking notice before, I'm sure everybody's taking notice today. You know, you know what I find interesting when I look there is that he kind of started the season with Kershaw. Was he going to have a Colfax kind of year? He did. You ended the season with Bumgarner being the best pitcher in baseball and leading the San Francisco Giants to the World Championship. During the middle of the year, you have La Russa, Tony La Russa, signing with the Diamondbacks to kind of lead them out of where they've been. And you end, really, right before spring training, talking about how relevant and more the San Diego Padres are. It's no, uh, no amazing. Question. And, you know, the, the questions in that division for me, uh, in addition to how will this new Padres roster cobble itself together? How good can they be? That's that's the big question. What about the new look Dodgers? I love how they're improved up the middle, but without Matt Kemp, there's a little bit of swagger that's gone there. Uh, the Dodgers, we know that they're going to win a lot of games. The Giants are going to win a lot of games. The Padres are probably going to win a lot of games. The Diamondbacks you touched on. They might be the most interesting team of all because they could be okay. They could be terrible. Yeah. They could be real good. Who knows? Yeah, it's it, it's interesting when you talk about the Diamondbacks or think about the Diamondbacks, you not only talk about what they have on the field, Paul Goldschmidt, one of the best hitters in baseball, and others, but you also talk what Tony La Russa, Dave Stewart, and his staff are going to do. We've heard a lot of comments from both of them that analytics are going to play a smaller part, smaller part than they do with other ball clubs. They're going to really put their eyeballs on people and try to figure out who are the players and who are not the players. But uh, you're right. Arizona, I think, has mo the most questions. They're a wild card yeah. there. I mean, uh, Yasmani Tomas, I like that signing. That's a guy that we just we don't know how it's going to work out for him. Is he going to be the next Puig or Cespedes or Abreu or not? Uh, a lot of things to watch there early in the year. Love watching Pollock play. I don't know if you've seen him play yep. a lot. Boy, he's fun to watch. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch the West in general. And uh, Joel Sherman, kind of jumping off of this, has put together a list of uh, teams whose off-seasons he likes the most. And then the other side of the coin, teams that probably left too much meat on the bone. And let's start with the teams who you think, Joel, have done the most this offseason. And ironically, or not, you don't have the Padres on your list. Uh, the Padres and Marlins both didn't make my list, and they were the teams that were most aggressive this offseason. Part of it is just learning from history a little, Matt. We always, the, the teams that win the winter don't always win the summer, hardly ever. Remember, the Marlins did this a couple of years ago when they built up. Burley, Jose Arreyes, etc., and they were dealing out of it quickly. And the Padres, with everything they've done, they worry me a little. They're so right-handed. Uh, I think Yonder Alonso and Amarista are the only lefties who will be in their lineup regularly, and their defense has gone from pretty good to suspect, especially with Will Myers playing center field. Uh, I wonder about those two areas. They're a lot more interesting and a lot more talented. But I think they also have a lot of defects that they might have to work on during the season. All right. Well, I, I guess uh, that would be why you left him off your list of who had the best off seasons. Although it, it seems incredible to me that he's not on your list, AJ Pro or the Padres. Who is on your list then, Joel? Who had a better off season than the Padres? Well, number one was the White Sox. Um, I love what they did because everything they did made them better without long-term risk. Obviously, there's some they added, but. They get Jeff Samarja in a trade. They don't have a very good farm system, but they didn't have to give up the best of their farm system to get it. And they team him with Chris Sale and, they, and uh, Jose Quintana, and they have a really strong top of the rotation. And none of their other contracts are for more than four years, so that if any of them are turn out to be bust, David Robertson or for four years, Melky Cabrera for three, Adam LaRoche for two. And I really love the Adam LaRoche contract for just two years. One of the most consistent power hitters. He's a mark him down 20 to 30 home run a year guy. If any of them turn out not great, it doesn't damage them long term. So it made them a lot better short term without damaging their long term. I get it. Uh, so based on that long term argument, I'm starting to understand why yeah. you left the Padres off your list because there are long term questions there, I suppose. Who else uh, in terms of good off seasons comes in second, third, fourth behind Chicago? Yeah, so the Nationals are number two for me, and I guess there's a bit of hypocrisy there because they have the most dangerous long-term contract from the offseason, the seven-year, $210 million contract. 
that they signed with uh, Max Scherzer. But I think of it, think of that signing as their general manager, Mike Rizzo, who drafted Scherzer in 2006 for the Diamondbacks, is making a bit of a long-term decision. All of his other starting pitchers who have pedigree, guys like Strasburg, Fister, et cetera, be Jordan Zimmerman, Gio Gonzalez, they become free agency either after this season or after 2016. So they have to go long-term with someone, and they went with, with this. And also, they turned Steven Souza, who's going to play at mostly 26 this year, into two very well-regarded prospects from the Padres, Joe Ross, Tyson's brother, and, and um, they also got Trey Thompson, the shortstop. So they also did some rebuilding this offseason. I think it made them impressive. Number three is another team in that division that went completely the other way, and that was the Braves. I like when a team decides completely to do something. And the Braves looked at the big picture, which is if they kept this team together, they were very unlikely to contend even with it. And you have to think like this. If Jacoby Ellsbury got seven years at $153 million last year, what do Justin Upton and Jason Hayward get in the next free agent market? Probably at least that, maybe more. That means Atlanta probably wasn't going to be in it. And so they dealt those guys, they dealt Evan Gaddis, and what they ended up doing is going from a bottom 10 farm system to maybe a top 10 farm system, which kind of points them towards that ballpark they're opening in two years when they want to contend. The thing that surprised me a little, Nick Markakis on a four-year contract and then needed needing neck surgery, I know it's the kind of grinder, tough at bats, tough guy they want to be a model for their team, but it turns out that I, that one might not have made a lot of sense. I really like what the Blue Jays did this offseason because if you think about Toronto over the last few years, it's felt like an accumulation of very good players but not a team. And Russ Martin and Josh Donaldson are known as kind of glue guys, especially Martin. And, uh, you know, he's such a good defensive player besides being a good offensive player. Donaldson a very good defensive player too. These are good two-way players. And I think it just improves their overall team. All right, two, those are a, 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 a complete list of teams. I was waiting for the Marlins in there, too. Well, the Cubs were my number five team. They were also very active this offseason. You know, Joe Madden and John Lester, I think they went a year early. I think they thought that this was going to be a really strong team for next season. They wanted to get through some of the more growing pains, get Chris Bryant to the major leagues. But Joe Madden became available. They got to go for that kind of manager. They know he could manage young players from his Tampa experience. And John Lester, they knew they needed a guy at the top of the rotation, and the people who lead their baseball operations department, Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer, knew him so well from Boston, and they figured they had to go early for this. All that uh, familiarity, uh, everybody getting back together, putting the band back together in Chicago, if you will, to take that Blues Brothers line right <laughs> in, in its own home.